Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another awesome night here at the Phantom Zone Radio Show. Woo! Our opening song was called Big Shot and is performed by tonight's guest. Oh, yes. Hello there, people. Thanks for being here with us. We have the amazing Wicked J. Fay moderating the chat room and ready to dance and shake it, don't break it, with all of you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> shake it, don't break it. Jay and shake I, your ass. <laughs> shake it up. <laughs> Jay and I are very excited to have on the show with us tonight, all the way from the UK, the one and only Jet Noir. Welcome to the show, darling. Where are you? I'm right here. Woo! Um, hi, guys. Hey. Hi. Um, thank you so much for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure. Oh, we are too excited about this one. Thanks. I know. I've been on the coffee, and I just like <laughs> to say, your, your theme song is amazing. It's <laughs> thank like, you. Oh, my God. Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Jay, uh, oh, Jay actually, uh, Jay wrote it, and... Um, did you? Yeah, that's that's Jay singing, and um, oh, I'm, I'm doing my little Tangina from Poltergeist on that one. <laughs> oh, my God, so, you know, we, we all need to collaborate yeah. at, some, at some point. Done, oh. done, and done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there you go, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Good night. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> so long. We got good. what we came for. <laughs> Well, not quite. <laughs> oh, yes, girl, bring it. <laughs> bring it on. I love Lowering it. the tone already. Yes. I do apologize. Oh, girl, <laughs> let's, let's keep it where it's at. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so what time is it over there? It's the actually, it's just gone eight minutes past one. So... But um, this is actually the time of day where I seem to start coming alive. It's it's kind of like I'm getting more and more nocturnal with every passing moment at this at the moment. It's it's so bizarre. It's you know it's it's crazy. I never seem to sleep at night anymore. Yeah, I hear ya. It's it's pretty tough, especially when you've got so much going on. But we're kind of vampires ourselves. Hey, hey did the dogs <laughs> bark cool. over there at three a.m. too? Oh, that? yeah, they do, the noisy little sods. <laughs> Why is it 3 a.m.? Did you notice that? Uh-huh, uh-huh, I sure, I sure have. I don't know what it, I don't know what that's about, but it's I guess it's uh, something within the animals that makes them uh, balk at the moon, no matter what's yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps they all have werewolf genes or something. <laughs> yeah. you know, no, it, it could well be. Yes, indeed. So that was uh, that was some song we opened with. Can you tell us a little bit about Big Shot? Right. Well, the song Big Shot um, is it's actually kind of about men in the music industry who I've had issues with in the past because I've, you know, for instance, you know, an old ex-manager of mine who, you know, was very patronizing and kind of always thought he knew best and, you know, liked to dictate. And the thing with me is um, I very much like to be treated as an equal. Right. And respect is something that's terribly important to me. And, you know, that's something that really grinds my gears. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think I was, you know, in an absolute state of fury one night and I just thought, you know, you, you think you're the big shot, you know, etc. And, you know, obviously I can't say all the expletives that I was thinking at the time. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I'm not for one second saying that I want to go out and shoot anyone. Right. <laughs> it's certainly not about that. It's kind of, you know, uh, what you know, you know when you kind of imagine in your mind what you'd like to do to someone. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's kind of about that. You know, it's kind of... Um, Almost like a kind of, you know, anthem of fury, right. you know, and, you know, it was very cathartic. It was very helpful. And, you know, as a result, a bloody good song came out of it. So, yeah, yeah, it was well that ends well. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, like, like the, it's the best time to write uh, or create any kind of art is when you're um, angry at someone. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, because you have all that adrenaline pumping and, you know, it can put you on a real creative high. Yeah. And, and you know, afterwards, you don't even feel like killing them anymore. 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's it's brilliant, you know, yeah. and you know, as long as it keeps me out of prison, you know, <laughs> it's, you know it's, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and even when when your your darkest moments too, when you're really sad, sometimes some of the greatest things can come out of that too. When you're just feeling really low and yeah, no, definitely. Like, uh, oh god. Yeah. In actual fact, I'm one of these people who finds it incredibly difficult to write if I'm too happy. If you're happy, I feel the same yeah. way. I feel yeah. the same way. Like I, if I'm too happy, it's really hard to like. You know, like get get there. You know, like yeah, I know exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, like I've got to be somewhere in the middle. You know, like transitioning yeah. into or out of a certain state of mind to be able to. Yeah, to yeah, do it. yeah. I absolutely get where you're coming from. Yeah, for sure. You're either at peace or angry. Yes. This, this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I find it easier to write when I'm either over emotional. Yeah. or scared or angry. You know, it seems to be when I'm feeling some kind of an extreme emotion. And, you know, it, you know, it kind of um, troubles me a little bit to um, kind of think that perhaps um, some of the negative emotions may even be the most powerful. Yes. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. And, I, the, I and those, are, those are the cool ones too. Like if you're writing like songs when you're happy, they end up, Sounding all fruity and stuff. <laughs> <It's dizzy. Yeah. laughs> no, it's true. It is. It's very true. I think that um, some of the best things come from the darkest corners of our minds. Absolutely. You know, the more angsty and I am, the better I write. Right. Right. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah. let's see. Um, so how uh, how did you get to be so talented? Oh my gosh! Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did you get to be so damn fabulous? I know, I know. You know, going it, on. It, I know. <laughs> um, well, it's it's. Do you know what? I've been musical from a ridiculously young age, huh. and um, I'm actually from a very very musical family. Okay. And um, my mother was actually a concert violinist, and my father is a jazz guitarist, so it's kind of in the blood. Wow. And um, my father actually started to teach me classical guitar when I was, must have been four to five years old. Mm. And, um, you know, it kind of just went from there. And I taught myself how to play the violin and the piano, and um, I also have a grade eight in music theory, so... You know, it's you know, it's really bizarre. I'm pretty sure that um, I actually learnt how to read music before I could read English. Right. It's you know, it's it's always been there. Um, but um, yeah, I'm still learning, and I'm kind of lucky to have people who, you know, are in my life who are great influences who are helping me to progress. And you know, it's good. It's a good place to be in. Wow, that's wonderful. Oh, so, so you play play the guitar and what else? The violin. The violin. The violin. I play the piano. Um, I also play the bass guitar. Um, you know, I can pretty much play any string instrument. And if I don't already play it, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to teach myself how to. Right. It's, um, you know, because you know, I've I've been playing string instruments for almost twenty years now. Um, wow. So you know, it's. It's something that comes very, very naturally. Right. And how wonderful, though, of your parents to, you know, pass that on to you and teach you I know, how to it, do it. It's an amazing gift. Yeah. It's an amazing gift. Yeah. And um, it's something that I will always be truly grateful for. Yeah. Um, you know, because, you know, music is one of those things that can get you through the tough times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's a wonderful form of self-expression. And, you know, it's, you know, I feel so blessed to have that in my life. I really do. Yeah. I mean that's that's something that's really amazing. And Jay Jay's also from a musical family as well. His dad That's was really that. cool. Yeah. yeah my, my dad cool. played the piano, the saxophone, the trumpet. Oh, I love the saxophone. I would love to be able to play brass instruments, but um it's not something I've tackled up until now, but I love the sound of a saxophone. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's a really cool, cool instrument. So did you um 
Did you always like to sing and perform as well when you were little? Well, I kind of um, got into the singing by accident. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's it's really weird um, because I would never have considered myself to be much of a singer. Okay. Um, but, you know, I'd kind of, you know, I'd been in a band when I was 15 and, you know, it was actually a all-girl punk group. Nice. And we had so many problems finding a reliable singer. Uh -huh. And, you know, in the end, you know, one of us just had to put our hands up and say, you know what, I'll do it. I was that fool. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, um, the band fell apart anyway for various reasons, you know, as sometimes happens. And, you know, I kind of decided to go solo. And because I'm a bit of a control freak anyway, uh -huh. I kind of like to do things my own way right. and you know it's you know um, that's kind of how I fell into singing it's kind of you know what I'll just do it myself and you know I, I was lucky enough to find that I can kind of you know carry a note and you know it's it's you know it's okay I mean I, I tend to I do a lot of um, spoken word on a lot of tracks and right right I'm, I'm you know I'm slightly more comfortable doing that yeah, because I, I have to say, like, you, I mean, I've heard a lot of your music, and when you when you sing, like, you have a beautiful voice. I was really, like, yeah, I was like, oh, my God, I was like, it's it's so, it's so different from your, like, spoken word stuff, even though you can it still is, hear, yeah. you can still hear your voice there, but no, I'm like, when, when you sing, I was really, I was like, oh, wow, I was like, she has such a pretty voice. <laughs> it's really funny, because um, when I first started recording um, vocals, I used to find it so difficult. You know, if I was in a studio, I used to have to say to the engineers, um, can you say the other way, please? <laughs> you know, I, I used to, you know, get so shy and blush. And, you know, I used to find it easier to wear sunglasses to do it so that I didn't have to see people's eyes. And, and then yeah. people started saying, you know what, you've got a really good voice. And it's right. kind of like, do I? It's, it's really hard to listen to yourself objectively. Yeah, yeah. Know, because very few of us like the sound of, our own voice and you know it's kind of even in terms of this radio show um when it's down on podcast you know obviously i'm going to have a little bit of a listen of course but it's going to make quite difficult listening in a way because right. it's kind of going to be oh do i sound like a geek does my voice sound okay yeah you know, and really really strange and you know it's never something that you fully get used to I don't think. Right, right. Well, no, you I mean, know, we, do, we do the same thing. Like, we, we listen to ourselves, and we're just like, ugh, you know. But yet so many other people, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you have that moment where you cringe when you hear yourself. Oh, like, God, yeah. You're like, yeah, oh, wow, like, did I say that, or did I really sound like that? But it's but it's not how, <laughs> but it's, it's Especially our first show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, it's, you know, it takes so much nerve and, you know, so much gut to kind of do it, you know, and yeah. I respect anyone who does something like that because, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's not easy to kind of, you know, put yourself out there yeah. and, you know, do something and, you know, it's such a cool thing to do. It really is. Yeah, thanks. And we, you know, we have a lot of fun doing it and, you know, I, I have so much respect for any artist and singer and any performer that has the nerve and the guts to get up there and do it. You know? What, what yeah, I, I do, I, I just pretend all the listeners are naked. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, how's that working for you tonight? <laughs> you know, are, are you pitching dirt things or, you know, <laughs> you know, I want details. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Because um, I must admit, I don't have the chat bit on at the moment because I, I'm the kind of person who finds it hard to concentrate on one thing at a time. And I know that if I have the chat room up, I, you know, I, my, you know, my attention's going to end up wandering off to perhaps what exactly. someone's Exactly. This is I exactly, that, so. exactly why we have Wicked J. Fay on the show with us because... You know, yeah. she's she's our third member of our show, and she keeps the chat room pumping and going because, you know, just for me, it's it's hard. It's like one or the other. I'm either with the guest or I'm in the chat room, and it's yeah. it's very distracting because everyone's having their own conversation. I'm like, oh, I want to talk, and then, <laughs> you know, then I get then like you'll you'll be talking to me, and then I'll space out and be like, sorry. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, why don't okay. we just have our guests in the chat room and <laughs> kill two birds? <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, we cannot have the radio show and just do the chat room. <laughs> Dad, forget about everything else. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that could take off. <laughs> But no, but Jay, Jay's always imagining everyone naked. That's that's his thing. Well, I have to try not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know that's something I struggle with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but you don't uh, want to know what they look like naked. You know, you're just, sometimes uh, people are quite grim. Let's yeah, say, it's, you know, grim is a very very nice way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, some people you just don't want to think about their saggy bits. Yes. You know, it's, you know, it's, exactly. <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> Here's a fun game. Let's name someone we would never want to see naked. <laughs> Most of my ex-boyfriends. There you go. Uh, there you go. I've already lived it. I don't need to go there again. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, I'm about to ask an off-the-cuff question because I'm also a chef, and occasionally I like to ask a cooking question to our guests. Mm-hmm. So I would like to ask you, do you like to cook? Right. Um, I have to be perfectly honest. Um, do. I'm, I'm actually really not the most skilled of cooks at all, it has to be said. And um, <laughs> with me, you know, it's, it's basic things like cheese on toast, beans on toast, mm-hmm. Anything else on toast that I can kind of think of. Um, you know, I, I, I am one of these people who can make one hell of a mean roast. But um, I think pretty much everyone says that, don't they? No, I mean, I, I think there's always at least one thing that somebody, whether you like to cook or not or know how to do it or whatever, there's got to be one thing that you really just cook the fuck out of. You know, like, well, like you can cook it like nobody's business. Oh, I know. Lasagna. It's that, great. You get it from Iceland, keep it in the freezer, pop it in the microwave for 10 minutes, <laughs> put loads and loads of chili flakes on it because everything should have spice added to it. There you go. Um, get some garlic bread. You know, that that's my cooking. You know, microwavable meals, but with spice added to them. Nice. You know, that's, you know, that's about the extent of what I do. You know, I, I'm racking my brain. You know, I'm sure I must have cooked something at some point in my life. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> but, um, I mean, most of my staple diet, it has to be said, are crisps and chocolate. Nice. And coffee and yeah, ginger beer. So, yeah, and um, cheese. So, you know, not, not much cooking is called for. So what are like what, what are some of your favorite meals then? Like like what is like like your your go to snack or something that you make all the time that you could just eat over and over? Um at the moment it's definitely cheese on toast. Nice. But um with jalapenos and chopped onion, chopped garlic, those kind of things added to it, which in a way is kind of like a poor man's pizza, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and you know, I, face. Like, uh, I wish you could yeah. see the look on Jay's face right now. <laughs> He's just like drooling. I put like I put cheese and peppers. I eat everything with peppers. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um on cheese on toast, I tell you what's also really nice is if you get tomato puree and you just put a tiny little bit underneath the cheese, that is so so nice. Yeah, that sounds lovely. You know, and um, I went. Oh, we so shared, shouldn't we? Yeah. You know, I've actually, I've actually made myself hungry just talking about that. <laughs> I know, um, right? Yeah, I, I actually. Too early in the show to talk about food. Oh, I know, I know. You've got to wait for an hour yeah, until gotta, you can eat to... something, and you know, it must literally be your dinner time over there. Yeah, it's Is actually, it what, yeah, half five? Yes. Yeah. It's half past five right now, so um, yeah, it's oh. about that time. But you know, we always like eat when we're done. It's it's fine. You know, the show the show is what gets our appetite going. Which yeah, is kind of why I usually ask a question about food because I think it's uh you know kind of changes it up a little bit. You know, because everybody yeah. everybody eats and not everybody talks about it. <laughs> I know. I I'd I'd rather it eat. never happen. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely has. love food. I love food so much, and you know, it's it's really funny because I'm actually prepared at the moment. I have a tall glass of ginger beer. I have my coffee. I have crisps next to me. I have nice. chocolate next to me. Nice. Um, but I'm literally going to eat through the song. 
so you know, so that people listening won't hear me sort of chomping away and think, oh my gosh, you know, that's disgusting. I've gone right off the girl. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's see. So so how old were you when you first started writing? I was 15 years old. And um, this is when I was in the punk band, and um, it was a lot of angry, shouty songs, um, because I used to be into Atari Teenage Riot in a massive, massive way. Nice. And um, even now, I still love Alec Empire, and, uh, you know, very angry, very shouty songs. Every time I performed, I, you know, I'm sure that I ended up with laryngitis as a result, and, you know, it's... You know, I kind of look back now and it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe, you know, we did that, you know. Um, <laughs> but, yes, you know, it's one of those things where you sort of look back and, you know, it's really, really funny. And, you know, it's, you know, in a bizarre way, sometimes I'd love to go back in time and kind of relive those days because it was so much fun. And the problem with getting older is that at some point you have to be an adult. <laughs> and you know, I, I actually... I turned 25 in less than four weeks. Dude, and I know you are right before Halloween. Oh, wow. oh yeah. I know. <laughs> I guess she's just a baby. Oh. I know, and it's, I'm kind of at that awful stage where, you know, I'm kind of thinking, do I need to start being a grown-up now? You no. know, how long, no. how long can I get away with still being a bit of a pain? You know, how long can I still be trouble? I, you know, say, how I, I say for the rest of your life. Because Amen to that. <laughs> How long do you think I could get away with wearing baggy pants? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on how much of your undercrackers they show. Yes. Oh, God. And, and it depends on whether you wear nice undercrackers, you know, whether they have a nice designer label on them or, you know, whether, you Let know, you... Let me tell you, his undercracker is pretty nice. Okay, uh, let me just put that out there right now. <laughs> Excellent. Indeed. But no, I mean, like, I mean, like, we're, I mean, look, I'm going to be 37 this year, and I'm very proud of my age. I'm going to be 40 very, very soon. And well, I, you look and, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that you know, was awesome. I, I, the yeah. blood curdling. Nice. <laughs> you, you know, you look good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, honestly, because I feel like, A, it's, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm even here, that I made it this far, and B, like, I don't even feel, you know In my I mean? experience, there's no such thing as luck. Thank you, Obi-Wan. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you, you know, it, I know that I'm an adult, and but I also feel like I'm still a kid in a lot of ways, and you know, I don't know. I just, I just like to have fun. I think you should be yourself all the time and not, you know, restrict yourself. And you know, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you've probably witnessed on Facebook that you know I, I don't restrict myself at all, and um, I have a tendency <laughs> to get reported every five minutes. I know what happened I, with. <laughs> I know. I just I keep offending people. Oh, it's like, God. how could I possibly do that? <laughs> you know, I mean, look at this face. What could I possibly oh. do to That's offend right. anyone? Well, you know, it gets to the point though that you want to you want to start topping yourself now. You're just like, okay, well, if you thought that was offensive, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. and that was me being restrained. Yeah. That's the worst yeah. thing. But you know, I'm, I'm I'm actually going to have a little contest with myself now to see if I can lose at least one friend a day on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, first, let's weed those people out anyway. Yeah, let's weed out the prudes. Yes. Yeah. Because they're not welcome on my page anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so do you um do you find that writing the lyrics is easier than the music itself? Um. Well, the thing with me is um I I find lyrics very very personal. So you know I I sometimes you know worry that in a way I'm kind of revealing too much of myself. Um. When I write lyrics for a Song. So, you know, it's I'm kind of still developing the confidence to really write what comes from the heart. And I think the thing with me is because first and foremost, I've always been a musician, I actually find it much easier to write the instrumental first. And then it's kind of through listening to it that, 
it's almost like um, I hear voices in my head singing to me. Mm-hmm. If, that, if that doesn't sound too insane. No, 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 no. <laughs> the voice not at in all. my That's head. That's exactly me. what happens um, to me when I write a song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The music comes first, and then it's almost like the music sings to me. It's like it evokes the singing, you know, inside me. Right. And, you know, that's kind of how it works. Um, yeah. Yeah, because everyone's creative process is, is different. And, you know, like, because some people can, can hear, like, hear the music and, and the lyrics at the same time. Like, they start to write it, and it's all there already. You know, like, the yeah. music and, yeah. and the, the oh, words. For, for me, I would write the lyrics out. And then look back at the lyrics, and then I'd hear the melody. You know? Right. So you're an actual polar opposite. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's That's polar, all right. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Join the club, baby. Yes. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All of the best ones are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's a great... We'll have a little crazy in us. <laughs> oh, Thank the stars for it too. It's a great club to be in. <laughs> yes, it absolutely. really is. It really is. And there are so many of your songs that I really, really love, um, including this next one that we're about to play called "Doesn't Matter Anymore." Um, right. Yes, can you tell us a bit about the song? Right. Um, wow. Doesn't matter anymore. Is it's actually kind of a confusing one to me because. Um, I honestly don't really know what it's about. <laughs> it's, you know, at the time when I wrote it, it's kind of like my head was all over the place. And, you know, I had so many mixed emotions. And, you know, it's it's kind of like that song was born out of chaos. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the idea that, you know, the, you know, the gods aren't watching us anymore. They're, you know, they're sleeping and, you know, and that nothing matters anymore. Right. You know, that's, you know, that we just have chaos. And, you know, I think that's just where I was at at that point in time. You know, I just think I was in a lot of emotional turmoil. And, you know, I kind of listen back and I think, you know what? This is gibberish, but my God, it's cool gibberish. Right, right. No, it's a great song. It's a great yeah. song. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. 